Our gospel passage today is the multiplication of the loaves and fishes. It does not matter uh, which parish I've ever been at uh, in my time as a priest. Whichever parish I go to, there is a multiplication of statues. And um, I don't know if I can multiply loaves and fishes, but I can surely multiply statues. After Mass today, uh, you all are commanded to go to uh, the cemetery here at the St. Paul campus to see the most glorious and largest cemetery angel statue that you'll ever see in your life that was uh, erected yesterday and put on top of the old pedestal that used to have the cross. It's completely outrageous and um, it looks awesome. So um, anyways, that's just about that. Uh, At the end of our gospel passage today, of course, Jesus works this great and mighty uh, deed, this great and mighty miracle. Um, At the end of it, it says, since Jesus knew that they're going to carry him off and make him a king, he withdrew again to the mountain alone. Two powerful thoughts on this last verse here. First, Jesus knew they were going to make him king, and he withdrew. Why? Once again, in eternal wisdom and providence, God could have saved the world in any type of way. But it was a deliberate choice that God allowed in his permissive will for himself to be crucified, spit upon, abandoned, deserted, hated, buried in a tomb, and rise from the grave. It was a deliberate choice to express and to show how much he loves us, and thus how we are also called to love one another. If Jesus would have been taken off in glory, a crown placed on his head, all the Jews convert, we would not know what love is. We would not know what sacrifice and the redeeming message that comes with it truly is. So Christ does not allow this to happen because he wants to endure the cross to teach us the greatest act of love. Second, after he withdraws, after he withdraws, it could have said he withdrew to Galilee and had a great meal with Peter and Andrew. It could have said he went back to Capernaum and taught in the synagogue. But it clearly says he withdrew to the mountain alone. And once again, we find in scripture here clearly that intimate life of solitude that our Lord had with the Father that he sets as a pattern for all of us. The importance and the insistence of that life of intimacy with our Lord that we are called to have, which is modeled off of the intimacy that he had with the Father. Thus we come to daily Mass, thus we spend time in front of our Lord and Blessed Sacrament, thus we spend time with Christ. May we all the more during these Easter days find that time to be with Christ, imitating his time alone. Let us stand.